Good morning. Why do we warn the unruly? We're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Here's what it says. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Now in the epistles of Paul, we often find some of the most practical insights down near the very end of the epistle just before he gets into the personal greetings at the end. And that's what we find here today. What we have here is the question, why do we, why do we warn the unruly? Because it seems like it would be ineffective. It would be, these are the people that you, you just don't think would get it, right? So why would you spend your energy? Just don't forget that Noah spent quite uh, decades and decades. He spent a long time preaching, and uh, very few people got on the ark. And so he warned the unruly, but not too many got a ticket. So what we do is we warn anyway, and we pray for those people, and we try to warn them in a comely, winning way, and we, we try to connect with them. But we do warn them. And you see, each person is, is made in the image of God. There's something of God, Godishness, if that's a word, in each one of us. There's, there's an appreciation for the moral, for the right and the wrong, for good and evil. And although we we tend to wring that, if we turn against God, we tend to wring that out in our life and, and go our own way, God forbid. But also the Lord is working on us and he's appealing to us and he's, he's reaching for that Godishness, if, if you will, to, to draw us toward him. And so we warn. We warn even though we expect that, yes, most of the time we're rebuffed or we don't see a result right now. Don't worry about right now. Just we need to be faithful in warning. The infinite God has granted in each of us an interest in the moral, an, in, an interest in the aesthetic, things that look good. You know, your, your cat can look at a sunset and doesn't see anything exciting, but you look at it and say, wow, that's beautiful. God is painting a beautiful sunset for me. So we appeal to that, that God part, that God-like part in us. And so we, we use that. We do appeal to the good. And there's an answering chord, hopefully, in the other hearts. God has put into us a capacity to to see good and evil and to recognize the good and to be drawn toward it. Praise his name. We warn them because they can turn. They can become, if you will, truly human. We warn those that are ready to falter. We are patient under duress. We always pursue what is good, not what advantages me, but what is good. And so that is just our modus operandi, the way we do things as Christians. And that's going to mean that we, we don't just... We don't just hand somebody a tract and, and leave it at that. I mean, sometimes that's all we can do, but we want to spend time praying, thinking about our approach, thinking about how we can uh, address questions in a winning way, how we can help, how the Holy Spirit can use us to activate an interest in the person. Winning other hearts is worth the effort, and it's going to take a lot of effort. So don't be, don't be lazy, don't be slipshod. If you're a Christian, you need to come up higher. You need to go up on higher ground and try to be a winning person so that others can, can give glory to his name in the kingdom. Remember, too, that what the world says most of the time is going to be backwards, exactly backwards. That's just the lay of the land. So with these things in mind, let's, would you join me in praying? Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Thank you that uh, you call us to warn, and you call us to warn even the unruly. And such were some of us. But if we hadn't been warned, uh, where would we be? So, Lord, we need to carry on and appeal to people and try to be winning and kind and generous with them. Help us, Lord, as we seek to share your truth with others. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So we hope and work and pray for the good of others even those who would do us or are doing us evil. And I know it's, it's not, reflexively, it's not something we, uh, we're glad for. But you know what? God can help you. You have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus in a twisted up world that needs the truth that God has given to you and the walk with Jesus that he offers them. God be with you.